What's up everybody and welcome to a new series. In this series we're going to cover the basics of Conda. So what is Conda? Conda is a package manager and an environment manager. So let's now understand what that actually means and what those two things are useful for. And we're going to start with the package manager component. So let's say we want to do a machine learning project and therefore we want to use scikit-learn. In that case, we can just install the latest uh, version of scikit-learn and then start coding on our project. And that's because scikit-learn depends on other libraries. For example, scipy and numpy. And those libraries in turn uh, depend on other libraries uh, as well. So for us to be actually able to use scikit-learn, we need to first install its dependencies and then also in turn the dependencies. Of those dependencies and on top of that we have to install uh, the right versions of all those libraries so let's for now say that we install these specific versions here and then if we would have to install all the dependence, uh, dependencies manually then this could become quite cumbersome and time consuming so a better approach would be to simply specify the library that we want to use in this case scikit-learn and then let the program figure out or the right dependencies. And that's exactly what a package manager does. And this is especially useful when we not just want to use one specific library, but when we want to use several. For example, when we, when we want to use scikit-learn together with pandas. And in that case, a package, a package manager becomes uh, even more useful because those libraries that we want to use, they might depend uh, on the same uh, library, for example, NumPy in this case. But they could uh, depend on different versions of those libraries. So for that reason, it could become quite complicated to figure out all, uh, to figure out all the right dependencies uh, to make then everything work. So that's why a package manager is useful. But uh, Conda is not just a package manager, as I said uh, earlier it's also an environment manager. So let's now see what that is useful for. So again, let's say that we want to do a machine learning project. So we install scikit-learn with our package manager. And then let's say uh, we start coding, but after a while uh, we get stuck. So we then abandon the project to start a data analysis project. Therefore we need pandas. So we install it. And since it depends on a higher version of NumPy, we upgraded from uh, 1.11 to 1.13.3. And then let's say we finish our data analysis project. And then all of a sudden we have an idea how we might approach our machine learning project uh, in a different way. So we go back to it and then we try to run the code again. But this time uh, the code breaks and we get an error message. And we get an error because one of the scikit-learn functions that we used in our code uh, doesn't work anymore. And after a lot of digging, we then finally find out that this bug occurs because of this uh, upgrade of NumPy here. So for example, maybe a function in the library, uh, the NumPy library was slightly changed, which caused uh, the function, the scikit-learn function that we used in our code to not work anymore. So to get then around this error, what you could do is either update our code uh, to be able to work with the new NumPy version, or we could uh, downgrade NumPy again to the previous version that we had. And such kind of things uh, might happen every time we install a new library or when we upgrade an existing library. So clearly this is not a good approach for managing different projects. Um, a better approach would be to simply put all the dependencies that we need for a specific project into an isolated container or environment. This way then, when we then install a new library for a specific project or when we upgrade an existing library uh, for a specific project, then this won't have an effect on the dependencies that we have, stalled, uh, that we have installed in another environment. So uh, this way then we can simply switch between those projects and simply activate 
the respective environments. And then accordingly, we can then run the code again without running into any errors. So that uh, is what uh, an environment manager does. And another scenario where this is useful is, for example, when you simply upgrade an, a library over time. So if you then put your projects into different environments, then again, you can simply switch between those environments, therefore switch between different versions of, uh, of a specific library. And another great benefit that comes from using such environments is that your code uh, is more reproducible. So if you want to share a project and the code, for example, on GitHub, then you can also share the specific environment that you've used for that project. In this way, then, other people can then recreate your environment. And uh, this way, then, they should be able to run the code without getting any errors because uh, they have different versions of a library or maybe uh, they are missing one library. So uh, that's what uh, that's why an environment manager is useful. Okay, so now that we know what a package manager does and what an environment manager does, let's now install Conda. Therefore, we need to go to uh, this Anaconda uh, website and here you can click on products and then on Anaconda distribution. And when I first heard the, ter uh, first heard the term Anaconda distribution, I wondered what the term uh, distribution actually means. So just as a side note, from what I understand, what a Python distribution is, is simply the programming language Python itself bundled together with some other things so that you're then actually able to use Python. And those other things might be editors, IDEs, or some basic libraries. And the general purpose of, of a Python distribution is to simply make uh, the installation and actual uses of Python uh, as easy as possible. And uh, there are actually then a lot of different Python distributions and probably one of the most basic ones you can get from python.org. Uh, this distribution basically just contains Python, uh, IDLE, and some basic libraries like PIP. And the Anaconda distribution, on the other hand, this was especially developed for data science purposes. So it contains all the major tools and libraries that you might use for data science projects. For example, Jupyter, NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, sklearn, and then also Conda itself. So just to clarify, Conda is the actual package and environment manager, and Anaconda is the whole distribution that contains Conda and many other things. And in fact, there are over 200 uh, such tools and libraries in this distribution, and that's why the download is quite big with over uh, 650 megabyte. But we don't have to uh, download the whole distribution because they have also created uh, a slimmed down uh, a slimmed down version, which is called Miniconda. And this is somewhat hard to find on this website. So simply go to Google and then search for Miniconda. And then if you go here to the site, here you can then download Miniconda. And Miniconda basically just contains Python and Conda itself. So when we then download this, we can use Conda to simply then install all the packages that we need for our specific projects. Instead of uh, downloading the whole distribution and all those libraries of which we might only use a fraction. So for that reason, I would suggest downloading Miniconda. So if you then uh, have uh, downloaded it and installed it, then we can um, open the Anaconda prompt. And this is included in the Miniconda download as well as in the uh, uh, Anaconda distribution download. And if you're not on Windows, then you can simply open up uh, the terminal window. So now let's see if uh, Conda is working properly. Therefore, we can simply type in Conda 
it is then will list uh, list uh, the available commands that we have with Conda together with a short explanation of those commands. And if you want to know more about these commands, then we can simply use this optional argument here, dash dash help or dash h for example. So let's have a closer look at uh, the init command. Therefore, let's first clear uh, the prompt and then we're gonna say conda init and then dash dash help or we could also say for short dash h. So if we uh, run this, then we can see that this command allows us uh, to initialize conda for other shells, for example, bash. So if you don't want to use the anaconda prompt and you want to use another shell, you can use this command. And just to show it how that works, so what you do is then simply conda init and then you type in the specific shell that you want to use, in this case, then bash. So let's now open up bash and let's run conda again. And as you can see here, now we get also the list of the commands. So if you want to use another shell, you can uh, use that command. And this was now just a short introduction how to uh, interact with Conda. So now we can have uh, a look at the most common commands for managing environments. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.